somebody stop that guy before he bends again. Hey, howdy, welcome to the Bender Bunker, your one-stop shop for B Bender related lessons and videos. And it is the start of a new year. I believe it is year number four here in the bunker we are beginning. And man, time flies when you are bending the bee. And uh, we've got a lot going on in this lesson, as you heard in the intro. Uh, got to live up to the title if we're going to help you jumpstart your B Bender leads. Uh, we got to have a lot of ground to cover, a lot of material to work with. So I kind of threw a lot of things at you there in the intro. And what you also heard in the intro, if you've watched any of these videos in the past, is it, we've got some drums and bass going there. I know it's crazy. What? Well, I've got a new looper pedal, and that's going to allow me to import some backing tracks. So moving forward, you're going to be hearing a lot more percussion and bass lines to help us kind of put these licks in better context and then give us some help with our tempo, because Lord knows I need help with my tempo quite often. So a lot of exciting bass and drum tracks coming our way in future lessons. Now, I grabbed this one that you're hearing on this lesson from another YouTuber that created it and gener generously put it out there to the world. And when I do things like that, I will certainly link that backing track. So this backing track is linked in the description below. Head over to that YouTuber's channel, enjoy the backing track, give, give him a thumbs up, show him some traffic, and then you also have the exact backing track you're hearing to play these leads over as you practice them. So that's a step forward. I've also, I'm working on improving the sound here. I've got a new camera phone here. Uh, I don't know if the picture's any different or that we need it to be because I don't need to see me any clearer than this. But supposedly we've got stereo mics on this tiny phone. So let's test that out. Do you have any headphones there or maybe your speakers on your desk? I, I'm over here and now I'm over here in stereo. It's sort of like a bad Pink Floyd B-Bender song. So we've got that going on. So all kinds of steps forward here in year number four of the Bender Bunker. And so what we're going to do with this lesson is we've done in the past, divide and conquer, because we do have a lot to cover. Now, we're not doing everything in that intro. In fact, that second half of the intro was just me having fun kind of improvising. I was really enjoying the backing track. But uh, I'm going to take you from the intro all the way up to the big open string lick you heard me do that first half. That's what we'll be covering. Now, I'm going to break this into five distinct chapters, we'll call them. And what I'm going to do is go down to the comment section below. And the top comment will be from me. I will pin it there. And I'm going to put each of the five chapters, one through five, with a time link. So you can click on it with your mouse, and YouTube will take you to that exact section of the video of one chapters one through five, depending on what you might be interested in. I think it's a rare individual that's going to want to learn these leads all the way from start to finish. There's probably just sections of the lead that you'd like to learn, different parts. So hopefully by giving you those five chapters, it'll make it easy for you to save time and go right to the part that's interesting to you. So take a look for that in the comments below. And now go grab the bender. Maybe a beverage to stay hydrated. That's always a, a good thing. And this being a new year, let's stretch out. I want to pull a hammy. Let's get that going. And uh, get ready because we're going to help you jumpstart your bender leads here at the Bender Bunker. All right, let's get rolling with chapter one. But before we do, just a quick piece of YouTube business. And I know you're thinking, oh, good. He's going to talk more. And if that's you, hey, remember, just go down to the comment section. The top comments for me. Chapter one, click the time link. Skip all this part. Won't hurt my feelings because, hey, I won't even know you did it. So basically, we're just going to cover the top three ways you can support the Bender Bunker channel if you have a mind to do so. And the first two of the three are free, so that's always good. If you're logged into your YouTube account, just hit that like button while you're thinking about it with your mouse. That apparently helps us with search engine rankings, and I'd appreciate it. The second way, and probably my personal favorite, is if you're not a subscriber to the channel, just go ahead and hit that subscription button we've got in one of those bottom corners for easy access. Be a part of the Bender Bunker family and keep track of what we're doing moving forward as well as going to our channel and enjoying i think somewhere around 50 or more bender lessons already waiting for you on our channel so that's fun and then the last way is if you're a type of individual that likes to tends to show their love and appreciation of something with money which kind of sounds dirty but it's not hey we got you covered as well just go to the description details below expand that out that's also where i list all the gear we use in these videos for the gear heads but you'll see the Bender Bunker's PayPal account, and you can send over what we call a virtual beer donation. We call it that because almost all the money I receive here on the channel is indeed spent on beer. I figure it's the least I can do for you, the home viewer, and I'm willing to do it again for year four. All right, that's it. All business out of the way. Let's get started with chapter one. All right, chapter one, here we go. Important to note that we are in the dominant key of A, the backing track is. We spend brief time in D and E, so it's A with a one, four, five. A, D, E. So mentally, I'm thinking I've got a long solo ahead of me. I know I want to use my bender, so I better not come out of the gates too strong, too high up the neck. I might run out of gas of ideas of what to do during this lengthy solo. So I'm going to opt to go down here to the open A position and do a very standard bender kind of opening. And this is what we'll start learning with on chapter one. <laughs> Again, it's working around pretty much an open A chord. All right, top two strings are open. 
make the rest of the A chord. So you've got your index finger, fourth string, second, your middle finger, third string, second, right? And the top two open. If you start bender, it would be an A chord. Go ahead and start the party by picking the fourth string second once, sliding down, coming right back. Immediately go to the third string second, pick it once, and then go back to the fourth string second, pick it again. Now those are kind of ringing. Let's hop up, to the, hop up to the open B string for a note. Third string second next to it, still covered for a note. So now we have. Now we're gonna go back to the open B string and take our bender up and hold it there. Now we're going to go high E, third, with our little finger for a note. Finger comes off, open high E. Now we're going to grab that bent open B, hit it once to take it down and bring it back up again. All right, now we're going to go back to where we were, which is high E, third, for a note with our little finger. This time I'm going to the third string second, still covered by my middle. Going back to the high E open. And then I'm going to the open B string to let the bender down. And I'm finishing that sequence with the third string second for the A note. So all together. Now the bender's down. What I'm going to do is this. So what I did is I hit the open B string, took the bender up. High E third with my little finger. High E open. And then the B string to let it down and then bring it right back up all in kind of one motion. And I throw it back up. And then bring it down. It's all together. it up I also bring it back down so we're back to our resting position okay now I'm gonna do a slight change in my hand position I'm in just need one note now I'm gonna take my index finger to the third string second that a note and work this section out now to end chapter one So we've shifted our hand, so the only note we really have fretted now is the index finger on the third string second. I'm going to start by picking that note and also pre-engaging the bender at the same time because I'm going to need it. So note and engagement. Now I'm going to the high E. I'm going to go three, two, open with my ring middle open. Open. Grabbing the bent B open, hitting it once, taking it back. Now, similar pattern, but I'm making it a little bit more difficult because why not? What I'm doing now is I just did this. Bender's back fully engaged. Index finger hasn't moved. What I'm doing now is I'm going up to the high E third. And then I'm going to alternate with the third string second that I've got my index finger on. So it's work down, second fret high E, third string second. what I did before, which is the open B string up and down with the bender. So here's the first one and then the second alternate pattern. Do that again, alternating with the third string second. And then this time as the bender comes up, we quickly go ahead, take our finger off, grab the third and second string open together and let the bender down with those two strings together. Together. Repeat. And then three, two strings open. All right, I'm going to back up and play that sequence so you can kind of see what my thumb is working the G string and my index fingers working the high E. together 
chapter one. Shift hands. Chapter one's in the books on the chapter two. All right, chapter two. The backing track is making its first appearance in D. So I know I'm gonna stay soloing. I know I'm gonna still use the bender. I've gotta get over to D, all right? I just finished up here down in the open A. That was chapter one. All right, D. Okay, well our D traditional twang bender box for D is up here, right? So I can hop up here, or I've been finding on the solos as I build them, and again, this is the middle part, uh, why not go to the closest and simplest option? Because sometimes that's usually the best. So since I just finished in the open A, why not hop over here to the D seventh position? It's very twangy. It's going to work well over the backing track we have uh, that we're playing over. So here's chapter two. And it does start from the D seventh position. So let's knock that out real quick. Think about making a D seventh there, but we're only using the top two strings for this solo. All right, so I've got my index finger, second string first, and then my ring finger, high E second. Top two strings of a D7. I'm going to pick the B string first, take the bender up, and when I get to the top, I'm going to pick the high E second next to it. And when I do that, I'm going to let the bender down now. I took the bender all the way up with it, fully engaged it, and when I get that second note picked on the high E, I'm going to let the bender down about halfway. Here's why, because I'm going to use the audio I just achieved with those two picks to slide up here to the top two on the fifth. And, that, and so as I bring the bender down, I'm sliding up to the top two on the fifth, and I want to have the bender get re-engaged for the sound that it makes. Like that. Okay, so again, here we go. We take the B string first up. High E second. Bend it down. Now what I'm doing technically is I'm using my middle finger now is dropping in here on the B string and I'm sliding up so by the time I get to my target area on the top two on the fifth, it is my middle finger, my ring finger doing the top two strings. So practice the technique of trying to get up to the fifth without picking again. Okay, so I slid up there. I've got the bender fully engaged. We're gonna do a very standard B bender lick here. Let the bender down. So here we are, top two on the fifth, bender's fully engaged. Start with the high E fifth and then go to the B string, uh, fifth next to it for one, two. And then drop down on the high E third with your index finger for note. And go back to the B string fifth and let the bender down. And then move your index finger over to the second string third for that last note. Just got our index finger on the third fret there. Top two strings was exactly what we want. Because what we're gonna do is this. Which is the top two on the eighth. So we just finished this sequence. Now we're positioned. You have a choice now. You can pick this again where your index finger is on the third and slide it up to the eighth. When you get to the eighth, you're gonna start. Go up to the eighth. You also need you to take the bender fully engaged by the time you get there. It's a, it's a joint project. It's sliding and bending at the same time. But when you get there, you're fully engaged. And then once you get there, you hit the high E eighth to finish that. So you either can pick it or you can do what we did at the beginning of this. You should have enough audio. I didn't pick that one. That's tend to be what I do. You can do whatever sounds best to you. So here we go. All right, so now we've got the top two on the eighth, right? Bender's fully engaged. I'm gonna hop down and work my way down the traditional bender twang box here. So my index finger's gonna wander down here to the top two on the fifth. 
start on the high E, go to the B to let the bitter down. That's going to let my ring finger fall on the third string seven. And then I'm going to go back and either do just the B string or the top two together. Either way it works. I'm going to blast the bender up and let it back down. So again. I'm coming down pretty fast on that bender once I get to the bender box area. Like that. back up but I am bringing it back down to, to finish the chapter so here we go that's chapter two work on that meet me in chapter three all right chapter three thankfully quick and easy actually one of my favorites here now the dominant key of a we're going back to it now on the backing track we just came playing around with d7th got to our d bender box I'm thinking from a solo mentality I've got a lot of solo left what haven't I done already Let's slow things down a little, kind of draw some things out with the bender. So this is the sequence I came up with for the A. Sounds like this. So let's learn that real quick. What I'm about to show you is only using the top two strings, this first part. It is a four-step sequence. The bender is going up, down, up, down. So each, the bender does something on each of the four. Again, top two strings only. We start by hitting, these are double stops, means the strings have to be hit or picked together. And so the top two open, take the bender up. Once we get to the top, index finger comes down, top two on the third to bring it down. Leave that finger there. Go ahead and add your little finger to the top string on the fifth. Take it back up. Now once you get up to the top of that bend, let's go ahead and take the fingers off and come back down, top two open again down. Again, it's up, down, up, down, corresponding with each of the four. That's one of the many fun things about having a bender. I mean, of those four things, one and four are the exact same. The top two strings open, but the bender going up and then coming down later with it gives you a lot more variety using the same notes. I always enjoy that. So we're coming off of that. Bender's down. Now we got to come up here and do this. And so what I'm doing there is I'm using the seventh shape for A in a bender world. And if you don't know what I mean by that, that's just this shape right here. Remember D seventh is just up here. So you've got high E ninth, B string eighth, and third string ninth. We're gonna use that for this little lead section. So just came off of the bender's down now, my hand's down here. What I'm gonna do is pick the B string with my index finger, I'm gonna come. Like we've done in this lesson and many times in other lessons, I'm picking and sliding my index finger to the target of the B string eighth. So it's sliding and, and re-engaging the bender so the bender's fully engaged by the time I get to the target of the B string eighth. From there, bender's fully engaged. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to the top end of that seventh shape. So ring finger on the ninth high E for one note. And and then what I'm doing is I'm just ever so lightly lifting up with my ring finger and I'm dead noting that high E after the note. So it's one, two, dead note. Like that. And then I'm coming back to the B string, it's still bent right now with my index finger. Letting the bender down, using the other string, the third string ninth with my middle finger for that seven shape for a note. I'm grabbing the bender's down now. I'm grabbing the third and second string, the ninth and eighth right there, and I'm taking it up together, double stopping it up, and then bringing it back down. I think what I'm doing on that very last note of that seventh shape is I'm going. I'm not double stopping those last two together. I'm just hitting that B string in isolation as I take it back up. But I'm letting the third string ring still, so that's why it sounds like they're going together. All right, all together. That, my friends, is chapter three. See you in chapter four.
All right, chapter four. This is the only time the backing track goes to two different keys at once in a chapter. We're, coming, we're back, we were in A in chapter three. Now we're gonna go spend a brief moment in E and a brief moment in D all in the same chapter. So we just did the seventh mentality up here, finishing off there in chapter three. Fingers down. Backing key is going to E. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this seventh shape mentality down to E, because that's where the backing track's going, and I'm gonna do this. So the same seventh shape, in this case, I've got my ring finger high E fourth, and then my index finger on the B string third, right? And I'm gonna blast those top two strings together with the bender. I'm gonna do two double stops, two strings together, and I'm gonna do the bender each time. On the second one, I'm gonna leave the bender engaged. Now, while those strings are ringing, I'm gonna do one quick note on the high E fifth with my little finger. I'm going back to the B string, still bent and, and held by my index. High E fourth now with my ring. Then I'm going to go back to the B string and let it down. And then finish, as you guessed it, that seventh shape with my middle finger on the third string fourth to complete the shape. So it's... That's more up to speed. All right, bender's down now. Seventh shape for E is completed. It's going to D now. This is a very quick E to D section of the backing track. All right, I've got a seven shape available to me, but I already kind of used that when I was in D before. I'm right here in E. I've got the bender box for D. I know I got to play in D. I've already done that. And eh, let's go do something different now from a solo mentality. So what I'm doing is very simple. And as I mentioned before, sometimes the closest and easiest can be the best. So we do this. So what I did there, with the bender down, I'm working the fourth and second string together. And the DB, this is reminiscent of a lesson I put out a few months ago called Cranking Your DBs, where you learn how to work the fourth and second strings together with your bender. So that's kind of what I'm doing. So what I do is I came down off the bender now, the bender's unengaged from the E part, we're switching to D. I know I'm gonna go fourth string and second string for this pattern right here. So I'm going with my middle finger, I kind of come just below it and slide into it to get to the fourth string fourth, and then my index finger goes up to the second string third, right? So I'm going. So as I slide into the four string fourth, I'm pre-engaging the bender, and then I'm hitting the B string third. I'm actually, with my thumb and index finger, picking them together, so you'll have to do if you want to alternate pick or whatever have you there. But when I do that, bender's engaged, right? Now, there's other ways you can do that. You can you can do the bender each time. But you need to get the bender down to complete the sequence. All right, so here's the E and D together. That's it. That's chapter four. We're going to get to chapter five and end strong with the open string lick next. Chapter five. You made it to chapter five. You had my bender admiration. You're one of the, the, the daring few that made it all the way through. Let's finish strong now with the open string lick. And here are the first eight notes of that we're gonna learn. Very uh, reminiscent to the open string B bender workout lesson we did. So if you learned that, this is gonna be easy for you. We're gonna start with these eight notes. This is index finger, high E fifth, and then your ring finger over on the B string eighth. So start with the high E fifth for a note, B string eighth for a note. Then lift your fingers up and do the high E open and the B string open. Okay, next four notes are this. We're gonna take the index finger to the third string fifth, note it pick it once and then roll up with our middle finger to the sixth above it. And then we're gonna take our ring finger over to the four string seventh for a note. And then lift up our ring finger so we can do G string open. And at the end there, we've got the four string ringing on the seventh and the G string open ringing together. Here we go. Work on that 
back, get that nice and fluid. All right, so what you're really hearing now mostly is that G string ringing open. What we're gonna do is move our hand down and do this. So with that G string ringing open, hand goes down, we're gonna do the index finger on the third string second for a note, and then we pull off to an open G string. I'll exaggerate it by moving my hand, but I'm just barely taking my finger off the string off that one pick. That is an open string. All right, so one pick, open string G, and then I'm going ring finger on the fourth string fourth for a note, and coming back to G string open. What I'm going to do now, I've still got my ring finger on the four string fourth. I'm going to pick it once, roll down to the second with my index, and then off to an open string on the fourth. One pick, roll, open. So coming off of here. So now I've really got the four string ring open there, and I'm going to hop over to the fifth string with my middle finger, pick on the third, and roll up with my ring to the fourth. So here's what we just learned. Okay. Now what I just learned, what I just showed you there, is exactly what you do. You just move everything one string down. So let's start that sequence with the fourth string second fret with your index finger and do what we just learned. And then the very last note will be an open low E. And that, my friends, is chapter five. You have completed all five chapters. Congratulations. All right, we're done. We got all five chapters in the can. It has been a long day of shooting here in the bunker. I'm not going for mood lighting here. The sun has actually gone down on that side. We've been in here a while, but I did that on purpose. I wanted to throw a lot of information into this particular lesson all five chapters to give you a lot of different looks, a lot of positions up and down the neck, walk you through some of the mentality I use of thinking about how to build a solo with a B-bender involved. And my hope is one or more of the five chapters will resonate with you. You'll take it, make it your own, and indeed do what the title promises, jumpstart your B-bender lead playing. Now don't forget the backing track for this lesson is in the link below. Go visit that, give them a like, practice the licks over that, that's all good. And if you're new to the Bender Bunker, uh, we have ended every lesson we've done since the very beginning over three plus years ago with the following motto, our, our guiding light, if you will. It is never too late to go on a Bender. And we certainly uh, will probably be doing a lot more of these uh, Benders, that is, as the new year progresses. I'm excited about it. I think we've got some exciting new backing tracks, some new licks to go over, and I think it's going to be a fun year. So I appreciate you watching. I will see you real soon. And until then, do me a favor and uh, keep it bent.